In 2011, a woman in Japan lay dead in a forest for four hours after taking too many pills. When her body was discovered, it was 30 degrees below normal body temperature. She was not breathing, she had no pulse, and all efforts to shock her back to life failed. However, six hours later, her heart began to beat again. The woman's recovery is not a miracle, but a breakthrough in our understanding of how the line of what it means to be dead is getting blurred. Gone are the days of berry picking in an open field, and then the next thing you know, you're making your way through a tiger's intestines. Scientists now have a better understanding of how we die, which is leading to innovations towards slowing down the rate that cells die. The cool temperature of the woods prevented the woman's cells from breaking down as quickly as they would in a warmer environment, allowing her to lay dead for almost 10 hours before doctors brought her back with an artificial lung and heart. Researchers are experimenting with new technology to bring back the dead. From current trials involving draining and replacing a patient's blood, to developments in freezing brains for future hopes, and the largest ambition of harvesting a sun's energy to bring back everyone who has ever lived. Neuroscientists and tech companies are racing to put the Grim Reaper out of business. Current attempts in defying death focus significantly more on preserving the brain and body and less on messing around with dead bodies like a morbid potato head. When you're freshly dead, your brain isn't always irreversibly damaged yet. Contemporary research shows us that cells and organs undergo their own deaths, which can range from hours and days, depending on the cause. A 2012 study found that muscle stem cells can remain viable in human cadavers for 17 days. If part of you is still alive, are you still alive? And with this remaining ounce of variability, is it possible to bring you back to life? Once philosophical thought experiments are now becoming a reality. Researchers are coming to understand that death occurs more on a sliding scale than at a single moment. Sam Parnia, a critical care physician and director of resuscitation at the Stony Brook University of Medicine, claims we were all taught that we have five minutes after the heart stops. Now we realize that's outdated. Brain cells don't die immediately. You have to both die and have brain death to be really dead. These new revelations and advancements in resuscitation research come from case studies of individuals surviving death. In having a better understanding of how we die, researchers are better suited in their attempt to prevent this seemingly unpreventable, or at least slow it down. This is exactly what scientists are attempting to do at this stage by analyzing and experimenting with the effects of cooling a body to stop cells from breaking down. To resuscitate patients, it's now common practice for doctors to lower their temperature around 33 centigrade, using either liquid-filled pads or catheters that cool them from the inside. This will send a body into a hibernation-like state, allowing it time to recover from injury or trauma and lessen the brain's swelling along with reducing cellular activity that includes their instructions to commit suicide in these moments. A study conducted in Norway found that these steps, along with CPR, increased someone having a heart attack's chances of survival from 26 to 56%. Of those survivors, 90% did not suffer any long-term neurological or physical repercussions. The more we discover how death works, the better prepared we are in combating it. The recent breakthrough in resuscitation has led both doctors and corporations to explore the possibilities of bringing the dead back to life. And while some in the medical field are working on improving resuscitation rates after cardiac arrest, others are trying to crack the code to a longer lasting and perhaps eternal life. Essentially, they're trying to turn us into those trick birthday cake candles that are really hard to blow out. Like you give it a super hard and it goes out, and then the next thing you know, that sucker lights back up. A 2019 discovery demonstrated how brain activity could be restored in pigs more than 10 hours after the animal was killed. Which, we can't tell if that's good or bad news for Babe. Even when all signs of life vanished in the pig and the brain cells were deprived of oxygen, the underlying cells didn't die for many hours, 
and could possibly last days. Sam Parnia claimed this study is Nobel Prize worthy and that the irreversibility of death is simply a lack of medical means. Parnia believes that once we know more about how to switch off the process of death, we can create drugs that target those pathways and can be administered on the spot by emergency personnel to keep someone in a viable, hibernation-like state until they get to the hospital where they have a chance to recover hours later. Dr. Peter Ree and Dr. Samuel Tisherman at the University of Arizona are developing a procedure that involves draining a body of its blood and cooling it 20 degrees below normal body temperature while operating on an injury. Once the injury is fixed, blood is pumped once again through the veins and the patient is slowly warmed back up. Ree says that as blood gets pumped back in, the body turns pink right away and at a certain temperature, the heart flickers back on its own. So far, this procedure has only been tested on animals. Entering the realm of the once seemingly science fiction, BioQuark, a life science firm, is developing a trial that involves injecting stem cells into the spinal cords of people declared clinically brain dead. The subjects will also receive an injected protein blend, electrical nerve stimulation, and laser therapy directed at the brain with the intended goal of growing new neurons and spurring them to connect in an attempt to bring the brain back to life. Stem cell injections to the brain and spinal cord have shown positive results in children with brain injuries, and trials using similar procedures to treat cerebral palsy have been completed. Neurologist Dr. Arian Lewis and bioethicist Arthur Kaplan wrote in a 2016 editorial the BioQuark trial has no scientific foundation and gives families a cruel false hope for recovery. BioQuirk has launched various iterations of the phase one trial, but have yet to publish results due to reported challenges in obtaining regulatory approval and failure to enroll enough participants. Despite setbacks and criticism, BioQuark remains committed to the Reanima project, its mission focusing on clinical research on the state of brain death and irreversible comas. If you're someone who wants to live forever but thinks bodies are overrated, you're in luck. In 2021, Microsoft announced that they secured a patent for software that could reincarnate people as a chat box. So if you don't mind being roommates with the Angry Birds app, the opportunity for AI to bring people back to life is becoming closer to reality each day. Artificial intelligence uses algorithms that need training on large data sets. If you have a copious amount of texts or voice recordings from a person to train the algorithm with, it is possible to create a chatbot that responds like the real person. Imagine the fun of keeping grandma in your pocket forever. I'll meet Roy Chowdhury, a professor of electrical and computer engineering in the robotics chair at UC Riverside believes that in the future, AI will be designed to respond in human-like ways to new situations. There are debates on how long this will take, with one camp believing it will take 50 plus years, while others think we're a lot closer. Humay, an LA-based robotics company, is working on plans to freeze the brain after death with expectations that technology will catch up. When this believed time comes, a bunch of brains will be unfrozen like a package of nuggets forgotten in the back of a McDonald's freezer and then resurrected in an artificial body. The most ambitious attempt to bring the dead back to life is theorized to come from the Dyson Sphere in the far, far future. The Dyson Sphere is a hypothetical megastructure that will provide a super-intelligent artificial agent, an AI with the enormous amounts of power it needs to collect as much historical and personal data as possible to build an exact digital copy of someone. The Dyson Sphere would need to completely encompass a star and capture a large percentage of its power. If this machine were to come into existence, it would have the power to bring everyone in human history back to life as a digital copy. You would be able to live your entire life again in a simulated reality, and when the time comes for you to die again, you could be transported to a simulated virtual afterlife. Could this be happening in our existence right now? Well, luckily, we don't have to turn our brains into a popsicle to find out. Like the rest of the greatest mysteries about our lives, we just have to sit back, relax, and eventually, we'll find out. <laughs>